So Ben, what about you? So you you guys are funded, uh, or you bunny own cash? We're not. Yeah, we're we're bootstrapping right now. Um, I started the company in college just a couple years ago, and uh, really just keeping it super lean. Uh, you know, we've applied for grants and we've participated in competitions, and you know, we've won a few thousand dollars here and there to get us started. But yeah, really bootstrapped, living at home, making it work the best I can. Excellent, excellent. That's so, cool. uh, yeah, that's nice. That's very good. I think one of the, one of the webinars I was I was talking to one of these uh, folks in the e-commerce company, and he was saying, you know what, managing investors is altogether a different ball game. A lot of your energy goes there. You know, you think that you're gonna get investors' money and everything's gonna be smooth from that day. The answer is no. The moment you have an investor that comes on board, you have a boss who you have to report to, and his and his vision can be completely disaligned to yours. How do you manage his ex expectation? He might just ask you to meet. Perhaps he's looking at profitability as well as increasing number of customers and burn less cash, get more customers, or maybe burn more cash, get more customers. Or I mean, the expectations can be entirely different. So when we're choosing a business partner, or or let's say or an uh, investor, we have to think what are his visions. We, we, do, we should not just be looking at somebody's money and then the money come in and we, we will be doing our business. It's very important to understand what's his vision, what he want to do with the money. Uh, great. Uh, so, but you are looking for investment, Ben, right? Potentially, yeah. We, I mean, we're, we're becoming more investable uh, as we grow and as we scale and um, bringing on, on different partners to, what, to, to increase our capacity. Money? Um, really, we would increase our capacity. Um, we'd, we'd scale so that we can get our price down, uh, and then we could really play in the grocery game. Uh, it's, a lot of it's pay to play, and we don't have the cash to play. So um, right now, we're, we're growing slowly, um, but if we really want to jump into the grocery game, then we'd have to pay to play. Uh, in one of the webinars, Ben, uh they said that one of the guys who, who's also a Shark Tank winner uh, two days back, I was doing a webinar, he was saying it's very important to build a community. Uh, this mm -hmm. guy had struck a deal with Barbara on, in Shark Tank and he was saying it's very imp important to build a community. Once you build a community, let's say on Facebook or any other social media, you have 40, 50,000 50, followers. Then if you run social media ads, you run Facebook ads for $200 a day or $300 a day, it can remarkably change your business. So are you a big fan of ads or social media marketing or, or content writing or SEO? Are you doing any of these? So we weren't uh, before COVID because most of our business was B2B. So, you know, most of those were just like building really strong relationships with larger buyers who we could work with in the long run. Um, but now that we are shifting almost completely to e-commerce and direct to consumer, uh, we are starting to plan some ad campaigns this fall. Uh, chocolate melts in summer, so it's super expensive to ship, a logistical nightmare. Um, so we are planning to start really pushing some inventory this fall. Mm -hmm. Very good. So um, coming to...